Hi friends. Have you ever wanted to repaint a room with plaster walls and bare wood trim? Well, you've come to the right place. Follow me on this journey of transformation and scraping. Did I mention scraping? As I repaint this old bedroom in our 1940s cottage. Let's go. A couple of safety notes. Take care of yourself and your family and test your paint. Test your plaster. Test the surfaces that you're going to be sanding and scraping. Also, don't fool yourself into thinking that painting is just a fun and easy one day project. Keep your PPE on hand, gloves, hearing protection, dust masks, a respirator, and eye protection. If you haven't heard it before, the key to a good paint job is preparation. Scraping the baseboards, cleaning the walls, sanding the floor, cleaning up, and the painting, it happens pretty quickly. For wall cleaning, I use this phosphate-free trisodium phosphate. I don't really know what's in it. Then I get to cleaning and scraping the baseboards. I tried a bunch of things to clean the baseboards. A scrub daddy, microfiber cloth, nylon brush. I needed it to be a little bit more aggressive to get off the old paint and I don't even know what it was. A mixture of maybe old shellac and pollen. Who, you know, who knows? but I used a stainless steel brush to just kind of agitate that deep layer of muck. I used a card scraper for quite a lot of the scraping, especially of the top where the wall paint meets the baseboard trim. For cleaning the wood trim and the wood floors, I'm using a Castile soap solution. There were certain areas that almost had like a fossilized poo. I tried using a file and various scrub brushes, but ultimately I used a putty knife to just kind of shear off the crud. So what am I going to do about this? To get at the inside corner of some of these floorboards, I took a razor blade, contoured it on a grinder, and then just spent a lot of tedious time picking at the paint splotches that had fallen and become uh, encrusted and were really an eyesore when you walked in the room.
I used the contoured razor blade to pick and scrape at a lot of those little flecks of paint splatter that had accumulated on the baseboards. I used a little palm sander, just hand sanding off paint splatter that would have been too difficult to pick off one speck at a time. Preparing to paint is like a process of observation and discovery. And I found this dead register that was no longer connected to our HVAC system. And I confirmed that with my thermal camera. So I took out the vent cover and discovered something inside. I cleaned up the inside. Then I spray painted the vent register cover. I cut foam insulation to insert into the dead register vent. Spray foamed around the cracks. I lined the interior with black cardstock. tape the seams, put a sticker inside, and then sealed it back up. I found some stainless steel screws and washers to give it a little jewel-like update. And you can see on the thermal camera that the improvements that I made helped keep the cold air out. About halfway through the project, I got a contour scraper. Comes with a variety of different heads. This one's a slightly concave straight blade. Each blade has two profiles. And then there are these other shapes, depending on your needs. They're all stainless steel. They're all sharpenable, and there's a file that comes in the handle. And for $16, I think that this was a nice find. 
So with all that preparation done, now I'm ready to prep the walls. I started with masking tape because I've done all this scraping and I know I'm not good enough to avoid splattering and dripping on the baseboards. Taking all the outlet and switch covers off, they all have paint stains, so I'll replace them with fresh ones. And I'll paint underneath them so that there's no risk of getting them stained. I will say that one thing that I did off camera was that I took some ceiling paint and I painted the molding that goes around the top of the ceiling and I included a border on the ceiling as well as on the wall so that that color fully floods the molding as well as a, a, a margin on either side. So when I have my brush loaded with paint, I can really flood the wall and not have to really worry about cutting in as much. Painting goes pretty quickly this way. I chose a white, flat paint from Home Depot. So after priming, this white paint that's matte that I'm going to be putting on, I think I'll be able to do in one coat. I made these custom fabricated steel brackets for a wood wall shelf that I reinstalled. I also reinstalled a articulating mount that has a smart 4K TV on it. And then I started with the process of the floor, which had a lot of like waxy buildup. So I used these power attachments to my electric drill, along with that Castile soap mixture to just kind of degrease the floor. Another thing that I used on this project was a olive oil castile soap, unscented, but it's very similar to a Dr. Bronner style soap. And the thing that I like about it is that it smells so fresh and clean. And it's a very small dilution that you put in a spray bottle with water. There were several areas of deep gouging and some water staining. So I tried to sand those areas and then blend them into the overall floor. And then instead of putting a polyurethane on, I did a very, very thin coat of boiled linseed oil. And I really like the matte finish. 
So in the end, you can see that I've got a nice fresh paint job, but it's so much more than the paint. That's my big takeaway. If you put a lot of time into the prep, it's not only gonna help the overall painting process, but it will pass the first impression and the deeper inspection of the room. So here's the big reveal. I really like the fresh white color. I put some attention into cable routing, the power cord for the TV. My wife handmade the quilt, which has a nice Danish modern style. Fresh switch plates, warm lighting, a little bit of greenery, the lighting, the register, not fancy, but those little elements of update, I think add quite a lot. I hope you enjoyed following me on my journey to refresh this room. I hope you picked up something of a tip or maybe a tool or a technique that you'll use on yours. Thanks again for tuning in. We will see you on the next video. Also, don't fool yourself into thinking that painting is just a fun and easy one day project. Keep your PPE on hand, gloves, hearing protection, dust masks, a respirator, and eye protection.